In this presentation, we will try to find out the logical expression from mux. I have taken two examples that you can see on your screen. We are almost done with our multiplexer. This is the last topic that you need to study in the mux. And uh, as you already know the basic concept of the multiplexer, so this lecture isn't going to be very hard for you. So let's start directly from the first example in which you can see there is a 4 cross 1 mux right and there are definitely four inputs to it and two selector variables a b a b is the selector variable so when the value of a and b both are zero you know the first input i zero is being selected as y one so this is your i zero and when a is zero and b is zero it is linked to your output and y one is equal to what i zero in this particular case, in this example, I0 is C, right? So Y1 is equal to what? C. Similarly, for the rest of the three cases, C again will be selected, then 1 and then 0. Now what we want? We want the logical expression. And if you remember when we were studying the basic of this digital electronics, I told you how to get the logical expression from the truth table. Why it is called as a truth table? Because we see the true values, right? So let's move to it. I'm not going to make the table, but I will write directly. Y1 is equal to, let's say for the first case, when A is 0 and B is 0, which means A complement, B complement. And when this happens, the Y1 gives us C. So I will write and C. This is and here, okay? Similarly, or for the second case when a is 0 and b is 1 again c is selected so a complement and b and c for the third case when a is 1 and b is 0 1 is selected so a and b complement and 1 now we are writing the values from the two table so it is written only for the true values and uh, when both are 1, 0 is being reflected as the output which is not true. So there is no need to write the fourth min term but if you want to write it you can write a and b and 0. This thing because of this 0 is equal to 0 and 0 or with anything gives the same thing. Fine. So let's minimize it. Here I'm having A complement C taken as common. This A complement C and A complement C are common in the first two terms. So I'm left with B complement or B. We are having A B complement. So Y1 is A complement C. This thing will become 1 from the properties of the boolean algebra a and b complement so this is the logical expression that we were trying to find out in this first example now let's move to the second example which is quite easy if you see because for the first two cases let me write it down this is your a b 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and when it is 0 0 0 1 which means the first two cases this is for i 0 and this is for i 1 this is your i 0 this is your i 1 both are equal to c complement so i can write c complement here this is your output y 2 similarly for the last two cases i2 i3 they are equal to c so i can write c okay so let's minimize it y2 you can see it is c complement when a is low similarly in the second case also it is c complement when a is low and when a is high in the last two cases it is c so i can say that the output y2 is not depending on b it is independent from V. Whatever the value of B, it has to do nothing with it. It just depends upon A. So I can write 
it as a complement and c complement or a and c so y2 is equal to a x nor c so this is how we find out the logical expression from the given arrangement in the multiplexers there may be different inputs connected in the different way but the procedure to find out the logical expression is the same so it's a very simple topic not a very new thing for you because you have already done the multiplexers so by this way we have completed our multiplexers and uh, in the next presentation we will start a new topic so see you in the next one